I don't believe I had ever had a mid-playoff series cliffhanger as I had in the last episode, but if there was ever a time for that cliffhanger, it was a 6-5 loss that saw the Winnipeg Jets tie up this series and that also saw Carter Hart go down to injury. Of course, that's not the only injury that we are currently facing. We are also without our top defenseman in Vince Dunn. So in terms of setting the stage, you know the situation, you know the team, you saw the Jets team in the last episode, you know that Jordan Spence is in on defense in relief for Vince Dunn. He is going to be playing his first ever playoff game. I believe his first ever NHL game. As he's been in AHL for us now, 25, or an AHL or for us now, he's now 25 years old. And in goal, we acquired him as the previous backup goaltender certainly wasn't working out. Six foot four pick of the Montreal Canadiens, Brandon Kalanos, has been called upon to save the day. He is in his first NHL season. Played 13 games with the Habs after two pretty good years in the AHL and was doing decently in Montreal. Four appearances here, solid numbers, but only 200 minutes he's played this season. And, uh, you know, at least for us, 724 minutes in his NHL career. And the last game he appeared in, he did get charged with the loss, but had a 923 save percentage. I mean, unfortunately for him, you know, 13 shots against, he gave up one goal in 17 minutes of play in relief once Hart went down to injury. <sighs> Can we survive this is the question. Could we survive our top defenseman going down to injury? Maybe. Can we also survive our franchise level goaltender going down to injury? We're about to find out. I simply don't know the case or uh, what the what the result or what the answer to that is as the Pittsburgh Penguins are up 3 to 1 on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, a look at the injury report. Vince Dunn is out for another 6 days. We do not yet know for sure about Carter Hart aside from last episode. It's like, "Hey, he's out for this long, but plans could change." It is a best of 3 against the Jets at this stage. A 51-win season is at stake. Can we survive without Carter Hart? As you get a look at the grades, we are now completely outmatched in every way by the Jets. Here we go. The thrilling conclusion of this series against the Jets as Toronto staved off elimination, who is going to be within one win of making their way to the Stanley Cup Final? Let's find out. First period, and a strong start for the Kings. Alex Turcotte scores 44 seconds into the first period. Tyler Madden is able to double up the lead. 14 shots to 12, but a 2 to nothing head start. For these young kings. Second period. It's now 4-1. to one. Kale Clegg and Matt Luff. Two goals in under a minute. Shane Wright was able to get one back. But it's a Leafs fan's favorite scoreline for the kings. 4-1. to one. Heading into the third period. 25 shots to 21. Kalanos. Just sees one puck go past him to this point. Here we go. Whew, third period. Can we hold on? Can we get some insurance? Luff, Clegg, Bjorn Thought stepping up. It's 5-1 for the Kings. Halfway through the third period. Power play for the Jets. Goes to waste. Under 5 to play. 450, 30, 47. Chris gets one back. Wright gets another one. 
but it's too little, too late. The Los Angeles Kings take game five by the score of five to three and are just one win away from their first Stanley Cup final in this series. Oh God, what a game for Shane Wright, but it just wasn't enough for the Jets. A great game for Corrali and Luff. A lot of players had a point. Just six players went without one. In terms of the old plus-minus Spencia following Clegg, five on five, a little bit rocky. Toby Bjorn fought was spectacular. And then in goal, it got away from him a bit at the end. But Kalanos was strong. And if he can have another strong performance, we have a shot. And we go to the next game. Vince Dunn is healthy enough to play, but will not play unless he is 100%. Because it is not worth risking losing him to injury for the rest of the postseason if we were to make it out of this round. Carter Hart is officially done for the postseason. He's out for the year. This is Brandon Kalanos' team now. Carter Hart is done. Shelved for the rest of the... <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Vince Dunn will not play in Game 6. If Brandon Kalanos cannot get it done... It'll be Pavel Francouz, Francouz, Francois, Francouz. Go with Francouz. Who will probably get the opportunity because, I mean, uh, otherwise it's, what, Lassie Tolmainen? Or Dustin Tokarski. <laughs> Game six. One win away. Two opportunities to get that win. We go into a hostile environment in Winnipeg. Can we close this series out and make it to the Stanley Cup Final for the first time? First period, good start for the Jets. Andre Kasha and Shane Wright. We outshot him 14 to 11, yet we trail by two. Second period, three to nothing. Tyler Toffoli, the former king. 24 shots to 20. That one from center ice because don't let your memes be dreams. We go to the third down by three. And in need of a miracle. As Dylan Genther gets us on the board. Plenty of time to work with. Power play opportunity goes to waste though. We're halfway through the third. Looks like it's going to be too little too late. Five minutes remaining here. Can we get two quick ones to force overtime? No, we cannot. Dylan Genther, 39 shots. Genther's the only one to get past him. 38 saves for Connor Hellebuck. We are going to game seven. The right to fight either Pittsburgh or Toronto for the Stanley Cup. Matt Savoy was our only positive player. Bjorn Font and Isimov just weren't good enough. And it's a question as to whether or not I think Kalanos is the guy now. The Pittsburgh Penguins await the winner of Game 7. But who is it going to be? Vince Dunn is 100% and is back for this seventh game. I need to throw the best lineup out there that I possibly can. Whatever combination of players that I genuinely think uh, I genuinely think has the best chance to lead us to victory. And I'm thinking that involves moving Van Kattishen down to the third line. He has seven goals, but I want to shelter him a little bit more because of the penalty minutes. Although that wouldn't be a good fit with him as a sniper. I'd have to change him to a two-way and I'd probably change Tyler Madden to a sniper, even though in theory he's not the best sniper in the world. 
But if Tyler Madden can keep scoring like he has on the third line next to Grundstrom and Kapari, we're good to go. Obviously dropping Turcotte down to the second line simply isn't going to happen. Not that Kapari hasn't been great. He has 19 goddamn points. How many of these points are on the power play for Grundstrom this postseason? Nine of them. Okay. That sounds about right. Do I make the Van Kaddishen swap? Just to see if Tyler Madden can explode offensively next to Grundstrom and Kapari. Fourth line, Wagner's still looking good. Corrali's still looking fine. I mean, there's nothing to change about that fourth line. There's nothing to change. There's no forward that I'd, I'd prefer to take out. I mean, you talk about like, oh, try to try to work in Kopitar. Like this, I don't think. Like, who who the hell would you possibly take out to work in Anze? You know, be Anderson Dolan, and that would be way too big of a risk. I think as it is, talking about do I flip Van Kaddish in for Wagner, and again the only or uh, for Madden, and the only reason I'm willing to do that is because again, Van Kaddish takes a few more penalties. And it could really benefit us. And then defensively, we need to decide if Jordan Spence is the guy. Two games, minus one, just not looking like an impact player. He doesn't hit. He does block shots. Which is good news, but it's just he hasn't been the impact player that we needed him to be. But obviously, you know, Dunn's back in. I think we're sticking with Marsh and Phillips. I'm a little bit worried about Phillips' penalty minutes, but I think we're okay. Bjorn Fotten and Isimov will probably stay the same, but be sheltered again. And Jordan Spence will take a seat for Vince Dunn, who was our big defensive acquisition. We're going to run him on the top pairing with Gail Clegg again. They were a little bit shaky. Bjorn Fought and Anisimov have been a little bit shaky at times too, but I think you know it's best to keep them together and shelter them. So it comes down to Kalanos and goal. 69 saves, very nice total. Comes down to Kalanos and goal. Or do I give it to Francis or even Twilminen? And then forward-wise, do I make that change? Or is Vince Dunn getting back into this lineup enough? That is the question. It has to be Kalanos. It has to be. If poise meant playoff performance, which it doesn't, it's just that, again, I've talked about this before with my talk with the developers, it's more of a legacy stat that just slightly, ever so slightly increases someone's ability to do well, not just in the playoffs. It's more of a legacy attribute that they'd have to rework the entire code for to take it out unless they've left it in. Lassie Twilminen, where's number three as a goalie? 9-13 in the AHL this year after playing for Asat in Liga. It's been brutal in the playoffs. I don't think we can trust him in a big-time situation. <sighs> Dustin Tukarski. <laughs> I can't trust Dustin either. It's Kalanos. It has to be. There's no other way. No, I want to. You know what? The change I'm going to make, I'm going to flip Madden and Van Kaddishen. I just have a hunch. And at a time like this, without Carter Hart, I need something that could spark the team to get us to the cup final. And making a change there on the wing could exact, you know, be exactly what we need to do. Could be exactly what we need. As it is, you know, power play time and whatnot will stay the same. So it's not a, you know, huge demotion for Rick. He's still in a very good spot. But Tyler Madden has been hot. And we need him to step up and do what he can do. And we're going to see if that's the case. There were people who thought we should have traded Tyler Madden not all that long ago. He gets a chance to make himself a hero here. We are good to go, as far as I know. We'll see what the line chemistry happens to be. Anderson Dolan, he following Van Kaddish and just aren't a good fit. Damn it. I can't drop anybody else. 
Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I talked about that before happening. Caddishan's not a good fit on the third line, even as a two-way. Mm. Five points for Anderson Dolan. Jared, I like you, and I'm not saying this is a possibility. <sighs> this would be one of the crazier things I think I've ever done. <laughs> If I scratch Jarrett Anderson Dolan to bring in uh, to bring in Kopitar so that Madden can go up to the second line, losing a player like Jarrett Anderson Dolan is it worth it for our captain and our leader in what could be his final game to try and push us over the edge to the Cup final? This is. Insanity to even attempt. I'm technically not allowed to take out Anderson Dolan, though. <sighs> he has to play. I wish I could do it, but I can't. However, I am going to stick with the player changes. Van Kaddishen's going to be... Mm, I don't even know what I'm going to do. What am I even going to do? Van Kaddishen is a two-way. It just isn't... The best idea. <sighs> yeah, limitations. If if it wasn't, and Anderson Dolan would probably give me that look in real life. If it wasn't for the limitations of this series, I would probably just outright make that change. I'm now trying to decide if I want Tyler Madden to still be a sniper. I don't think I necessarily... We've tried this third line as a... Uh, We've tried that third line as another skill line before, and it didn't work. It was worth poking around a little bit to see if it would work. It doesn't work. This team is what it is. Vince Dunn is back, and we need Kalanos to be the goaltender that I thought he could be. Of course, we have Van Kaddishen set up as a sniper rather than a uh, rather than a power forward to try and minimize, despite the fact he has the physical, uh, physical category, to try and minimize uh, the physicality from him to you know kind of reduce those penalty minutes, which still isn't working, by the way. Which actually makes me think I wonder what he would be as a power forward, as a bigger body option. Because if I'm not mistaken, I mean, he's been somewhat quiet. He hasn't really done anything in the two games we've seen from him so far. And maybe Rick Van Kaddishen is just a bowling ball of a power forward is what we need. I'm thinking of any little fine detail, any change we could make. I'm probably going to slightly adjust the power play now. And double-check the penalty kill because this is it. I mean, without Carter Hart, it's batting down the hatches. Don't overlook anything. We're going to leave Van Kaddish in where he is. Power play-wise, uh, we are going to be taking out Kale Clegg for Vince Dunn. We're going to get him back there. And that'll uh, kind of be the change. Although you could argue... You could argue... Now see, Grundstrom's not where I want him. Yeah, we're gonna make some changes to this uh, to this power play. So in terms of other righties, Savoy. So we're gonna put Savoy here. We're gonna put Kapari at center, and then for the lefty is. You know, I think that works. I like the looks of that. I'm gonna bump up the follow though. I like the look of that. We're going to see how that works. Penalty kill still fine. Let's do this. Here we go. This is as good as it gets for this team. In terms of the ratings. 99 offense to 97. 89 defense is equal out. 84 to 74 in terms of goaltending. <clears throat> Game 7. At home. Winner plays Pittsburgh in the Stanley Cup Final. <sighs> Patting down the hatches. First period, good start for the Kings. Matthew Savoy on the reworked power play. 
18 shots to 12, it's a good start. But ultimately just a start. We need more. Second period. There was more. Oh, there was more. Turcotte makes it 2. Wright makes it 2-1. Madden makes it 3-1. Chad Chris with 39 seconds left. Makes it a one-goal game. Heading into the third period of Game 7 of the Western Conference Final. 31 shots to 22. Here we go. Insert Joker clip that will get me copy right struck. Brendan Lemieux ties it from a horrible angle. It's 3-all. Anisimov, of all people, makes it 4-3. to three. Eight, seven and a half, six, five, four, three, two. Power play. Come on, Vince Dunn, the empty netter. <laughs> he did it. I should have jumped in and watched, but I don't care. How many times have you seen that fucking celebration? I don't even want to see the trophy. Fuck that trophy. That's not the one that we want. Five to three is your final in game seven. The Los Angeles Kings, despite Carter Hart being down to injury, Vince Dunn with a three point game upon his return. The Los Angeles Kings are going to the Stanley Cup Final to take on the Pittsburgh Penguins. Carter Hart is not here. But our hopes, our dreams, they are intact. How the hell did we pull that off?